Amen. And we're going to declare the word of God tonight. Luke chapter 21 and verse number 25, it says this. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon, talking about the last days, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, and the sea and the waves warring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And then Jesus says this, when you see these things begin to come to pass, then look up. Why don't you tell your neighbor, look up. Lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Your redemption draweth nigh. I feel led of the Holy Ghost to speak just for the next few moments on this subject. Look up. Look up. There's a lot of things fighting for our attention. There's a lot of things trying to distract us. But we need to remember God is coming very soon. We've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. We've got to keep our eyes on Him. I wonder if you would lift both hands and let's just ask God to help us tonight. God, help us, O Lord. God, help us, O Lord. We need you, Jesus, to speak in a mighty way. God, let your anointing fill this room, oh God. Let your people leave this house tonight. God, with the determination, oh Lord, to not waver. God, but to stand on you, oh Lord. We thank you, God, for what you're going to do. We praise your name, oh Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Amen. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. We face so many distractions in our world. I looked up some statistics and it says the average American is exposed to about and probably over 8,000 ads per day. 8,000 ads per day. That's nearly double the number of ads from the year 2007. And that is well over five times as many advertisements that the average person saw in 1970. As we go on through our life, it seems like there is just so many distractions with, with, uh, with cell phone being at uh, you know, on you at all times, and you having access to the world at all times, and, and it just seems like there are distractions left and right. I've gotten to the point where I pretty much leave my phone on silent all the time. If you ever wonder why I don't answer you, or if you ever wonder why I don't text you back, it's literally probably because I didn't see it. I try not to get notification after notification after notification, and, and whenever I have time, I try to look into it. And, and, uh, but we see this distraction just beginning to increase in our world. We're literally living out the description of the Bible in these end times, where the Bible talks about how men's hearts will fail them for fear, how we'll see the signs in the skies, we'll see distress among nations, how, how we'll see natural catastrophes all over the planet. And, and these things are happening right now before our eyes. And I believe now more than ever, the enemy is working overtime to try to distract us so that he can destroy us. The Bible says he's come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I believe he wants to steal your attention. That's the first thing that he will try to do is to get your eyes off of God. To get, you, to get you distracted, to, to steal your attention, to kill your faith, and to eventually to destroy your future. The enemy works over time to distract us and to destroy us. But God is wanting to shine through all the distractions that's in this world. In fact, as the world gets darker and darker, the light of God will only shine brighter 
and brighter. As this world begins to get darker and darker, ladies and gentlemen, we should be more different than the world than ever before. Every day that passes, we should be more distinct. Every day that passes, we should be more different because it is getting worse and worse, just like the Bible said. But God is trying, I believe, tonight to help us to understand that He wants to shine through all of these distractions. He wants us to look up. He wants, uh, he wants to comfort our hearts. He, he wants to give us strength. and He wants us to be an overcomer. But sometimes it's hard in this life. David said it like this in Psalms chapter 40 and verse number 12. He says, for there are innumerable evils that have compassed me about. Iniquities have taken a hold on me. So that I'm not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of my head. Therefore my heart faileth me. Ladies and gentlemen, this can so easily happen to us. If it happened to David, it can happen to you and I. And I feel led of the Holy Ghost to rise up to say we cannot let our hearts fail us for fear in this hour, but we must look up. Yes, there may be evils that are compassing us about. Yes, iniquities may be taking a hold on us, but we've got to look to the hills from which cometh our help. Because ladies and gentlemen, our help comes from the Lord. My help comes from God. We've got to look to Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 2. It says we've got to look unto Jesus. Who's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's going to author your faith. And he's going to finish it when you look to him. We've got to look to Jesus. We can't walk around with our heads down, with our heads distracted, with looking around at everything that's going on, look, being in a state of defeat. Yes, we may see all the evil that is compassing us, but we cannot allow ourselves to be in defeat. Judges 8.28 says that your head down is a sign of defeat. Thus Midian was subdued. Other translation says was broken. Midian was broken before the children of Israel so that they lifted up their heads no more. And the country was in quietness or peace for 40 years in the day of Gideon. This is a sign when you have your head down, when you no longer lift up your head, it is a sign of defeat. It's a sign of brokenness. It's a sign of that, that, that you have lost. And, and uh, you know, I was, I was talking to one of our Bible quizzers this past weekend. They were doing a good job, but, but it just looked like they were about to fall asleep at the board. And so uh, I talked to him. I said, you need to change your posture. I said, it looks like you're just like, uh, yes, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, called to be one. And it, it looked like they were taking, and they said, I'm not taking it nonchalant. I said, then you need to change your posture. I said, when you change your posture, I said, you look lazy even though you're not. I was just being real with them. And I said, you need, you need to change your posture from just being kind of, uh, show them, to being a, pos a posture that's a, of attack. We take Bible quizzing seriously. I don't know if you guys realize that around here. <laughs> Maybe a little too seriously. <laughs> but ladies, I, I thought of that when preparing for this message. I thought sometimes we need to change our posture. When we walk through wherever we're walking through, whether it be our house, our workplace, our, our schools, or even, even the shops that are around this city, wherever you walk, you need to walk with your head lifted up. You need to walk with your shoulders square. You need to understand something. You are a child of God. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter what you face in this world. It doesn't matter the evil that may try to come against you. You are the head and not the tail. You're the apple of his eye. You are adopted of God. Get your head up. Square your shoulders and be an overcomer. Be an overcomer. God wants you to be an overcomer. He's not willing that any should perish. He's not willing that any should perish. But sometimes we look at our big problems. 
instead of our big God. And I know this is a simple message, but I feel so strong in the Holy Ghost in these last days, ladies and gentlemen, we have got to look up. We've got to make a concerted effort to, to keep our eyes on Jesus. There's so many things trying to distract us, so many problems in our world, so many issues that seem like they are just, they, they, just, they are so fatal issues. That we've got to worry about all the time. But ladies and gentlemen, we've got to keep our eyes upon Jesus. You see, Israel, they, they, had, they had a big problem. When they first came out of Egypt, they began walking through the wilderness. Many scholars believe it was well over a million, maybe even multiple millions that, that came out of Israel. Walking through the wilderness on the way to the promised land. Came to the point where they said, how are we going to feed everybody? How are we going to feed a million, maybe two million plus people as we're walking through this wilderness? And God gave them the answer. The Bible says that he gave a manna that would come down from heaven every morning. Where they could just walk out every morning and collect what they needed to sustain them for the day. They could collect in the middle of the wilderness on their way to the land that God had promised them. They looked around and they said, hey, we've got some problems. We need some strength, God. What can we do? And he just said, look up because God's going to provide for you every single morning. God's going to provide for you in your needs. Jesus they, they, they had brought this to Jesus in John chapter 6. And I found this so interesting because they, they told Jesus in John chapter 6 and verse 31. They said, our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. But then Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. Moses did not give this to you. But my father giveth you the true bread bread from heaven and then he goes on to say this for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world then they said unto him Lord evermore give us this bread and Jesus said unto them I am the bread of life he that cometh unto me shall never hunger and he that believeth on me shall never thirst ladies and gentlemen in the midst of our wilderness on our way to the land that God has promised Jesus wants you to know something every day you wake up the bread of life will be there for you you just got to wake up every day and look up and you'll have strength to make it another day you'll have strength to make it through whatever wilderness you face whatever trial you go through you can just look up and the bread of life will sustain you God will sustain you in this hour don't think that God's going to desert us now everywhere people begin to look up to God he would never leave them and never forsake them he would always author their faith he would always bring a finishing to their faith he is the bread of life Jesus is that bread of life he's that strength for you every day let me say this he's an everyday God one thing you'll know about manna is it would spoil quickly, the Bible tells us. They couldn't store up a whole bunch of manna to make them for the, to, to, to last them for the week or for the month or for even three or four days. They couldn't do it. In fact, it would spoil by evening a lot of times, the Bible said. Think about that when you're thinking about Jesus being the bread of life. He said, yeah, your fathers gave you manna. And now God's given me to you every day. So ladies and gentlemen, you can't store up Jesus for a week. You can't store up Jesus for a month. He gives you strength for the day. He gives you strength every day. That's why his mercies are new. 
Every morning his mercies are new. It's not new every Sunday. It's not new every month. It's not new every year. The mercies of God, the strength of God, the blessings of God are new every morning. Every morning. We've got to look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. But if we're not careful, sometimes I believe we'll do, th we'll, we'll do three things. We'll either look back, look around, or look forward instead of looking up. And I want to talk about just those three things for just the next few moments that I have with you. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot look back. We cannot look back. We've got to, yes, we can learn from the past, but we cannot look back to the past and draw strength from the past. We cannot be like the children of Israel who looked back at Egypt and said, I'd rather go back to Egypt and back to bondage. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you, God has delivered you from sin. Do not be deceived. You've got to remember the hardships that God brought you out of. I know sometimes, and, and sometimes psychiatrists will even say this, or the, the studies and stuff that I've read will say that a lot of times we only remember the good things from our past. Unless they were very traumatic, we only remember the good things from our past. And if we're not careful, sometimes we'll only remember the good things from the world. But ladies and gentlemen, those things were few and far between. Do not be looking back to your past. Now's not the time to turn back. Remember Lot's wife, if you would. Do not turn back. Just keep on moving. Judgment day is coming. Lot, keep on walking. Lot's wife, keep on walking. But she made the mistake to look back. The Bible says she became a pillar of salt. She became something that she was never meant to be. When she stopped looking up and she began to look back, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot look back. Don't look back. Don't let your past mistakes paralyze you in your future. Let me tell you something. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. If you confess your faults, He is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1 9. He's, he's able to cleanse you. For, if you can, he's able to forgive you of everything. But let me tell you what the enemy does the enemy wants nothing more than to bring up your past. He wants nothing more than to try to remind you of who you used to be, how many mistakes you've made. Ladies and gentlemen, when all that begins to happen, you've got to continue to look up. You've got to look up. You've got to turn, tune your ears to heaven and say, it doesn't matter what other people say about me. It doesn't matter who I used to be, but I'm looking to Jesus. It matters who he says that I am. You can't look back. And ladies and gentlemen, we cannot look around in this day and age as well. This is probably the one I struggle with the most. I love politics. And I love sports. And I, I mean, I could, I, could, I could listen to politics all day long. I could listen to sports all day long. But if I'm not careful, those things will distract me from looking up. They'll distract me from looking up. It's so easy to get distracted with the things of this world. Especially in the United States of America where entertainment is king. So easy just to be entertained. Just to allow ourselves to be entertained and entertained instead of us entertaining the presence of God. We have got to keep our eyes on Jesus. We cannot be looking around. Yes, there may be problems. Yes, there may be situations. You know, Peter, the Bible says that he stepped out of the boat and he began to walk on the water to Jesus. And we all know that the Bible says that, that he was walking on the water, but then he began to look at the wind and the waves that were boisterous. He began to look around at, how am I doing this? How is this happening? This wave is about to take me out. Instead of keeping his eyes on Jesus. And the Bible says when he began to look around at the wind and the waves, he began to sink. And he had to look back to Jesus and cry out for help. And Jesus lifted him up from being drowned or even sinking in that storm. Ladies and gentlemen, 
We've got to stop looking at the problems of this world and get our eyes on Jesus. We've got to hope in God. If we're not careful, we'll begin to hope in the government. We'll begin to hope in our job. We'll begin to hope in our bank account. We'll begin to hope in our intellect. We'll begin to hope in anything else but God. But ladies and gentlemen, we cannot trust in any of those things. As the Bible says, hope thou in God. We've got to put our trust in God. That's what it means to look up. What it means to look up is to say, you are the supplier of everything. I'm not looking to something else. I'm not looking for anything else to save me, to satisfy me, to fulfill me. I'm not looking for anything else. I'm looking to Jesus. You got to look to God. He is the one that's going to save you. He's the one that's going to keep you. He's the one that's going to strengthen you. He's the one that's going to bless you. I don't know what it's going to be like the closer and closer it's going to get to the coming of the Lord. I don't know how bad it's going to get, but I know it's going to get worse and worse. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. We're going to have to look to Jesus more than we ever have before. We're going to have to look to Jesus and trust in Him and trust in His Word more than ever before. We've got to look to Him. The next thing we can't do is look forward. The Bible says, Jesus told him, take no thought for tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. Because sufficient today is the evil thereof. When you go into the future, I remember hearing this message as just a young man, and it has helped me so much. I remember a minister speaking on this subject, and he made this statement, when you go into the future, you go without God. Because God's in the present. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. God, I know God spends all time and space, but when you begin to go into the future... You begin to think about what may happen and what can happen. A lot of times we're not factoring in the strength of God. We're going without God. We're looking at all the negatives. We're looking at, at all the weaknesses. We're looking at all the things that may happen and can't happen. And, and, uh, and you know, we, we, we kind of think of it like this. I won't be strong enough when. But here's one thing we learn about God. God gives us strength for the day. He gives us strength for the day. He doesn't give you strength for the journey all at once. But He gives you strength to take the next step. It's a walk of faith. So that means we take one step after the other. And we don't have strength for the next step until we take the next step. We don't have strength for tomorrow till tomorrow comes. So ladies and gentlemen, we have got to put our trust in God because He is the one that holds the tomorrow. He's the one that holds the future. Yes, you don't have manna for next month or even for next week. You just have it for today. And here's one thing you'll learn about God. The Bible tells us He won't put more on us than we can bear. But ladies and gentlemen, we can put more on ourselves than we can bear. We put more worry on ourselves. We put more stress on ourselves. We put, we put more problems on ourselves whenever we're not factoring in that God's going to give us strength when we get to that battle. When we, when we get to the battle, God's going to give us strength. We got to understand, like David, David didn't know how it was going to happen, but David just knew, hey, you're coming to me with a sword and a spear. I've come to you in the name of the Lord. When, whatever, whatever I do is going to prosper because God is with me. I'm not looking at the giant. I'm not looking at the problem. I'm looking at my God. And he's able to sustain me. He's able to keep me. And he will not put more on me than I can bear. So I stand here today and tell you, look up. Look up. 
Don't look to anything else to satisfy, to fulfill, to strengthen, to give you peace, to give you joy, to give you love. All that comes from God. All that comes from His Spirit. That comes from the fruit of the Spirit, ladies and gentlemen. It does not come from this world. It can't come from external circumstances. It comes from the internal working of God's Spirit. you got to find something in the midst of everything going on around you to look up. Acts tells us about Stephen, this young preacher full of the gospel. He began preaching in Acts chapter 7. And they began to get so mad at him and what he was saying But the Bible says this, in the middle of it all, in the middle of people wanting to stone him, in the middle of people wanting, you know, just just yelling at him, in the middle of all this turmoil and all these problems that he began to be facing, it says, but he being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven, and he saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't care how bad it gets in your life. Let me tell you something. Stephen was about to be stoned to death. I don't care how bad it gets in your life. If you just begin to look up, let me tell you something. God's going to open up the windows of heaven, and it doesn't matter what man does to you. You will have the glory of God fall in your life. You can have the peace of God fall in your life. When you look up, When you lift up your eyes to the hills, when you look up and you lift up your head, because your redemption draweth nigh. Now more than ever, you've got to declare every day, every morning, God is your strength. God, you're you're my source of strength. I'm not going to get strength from any other source. I'm not going to try any other source, but I'm going to get my strength from you. David said this in Psalms 27. He said that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. Let me just say this. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but you've got a desire to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of your life. I don't care how bad things get. You need to get yourself to the house of God. You need to be here every time the doors are open. Be here every time that you can. Why? Because there's strength in the house of God. God will begin to correct your vision. He'll he'll help you. He'll strengthen you when you begin. And David learned this. He said, I've learned I I, I desire and I'm going to seek after. Dwelling in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He said, this is why, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle. He shall hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And then he says this, and now shall my head be lifted up. Let me tell you something, when you get into the presence of God, when you get into the house of God, and ladies and gentlemen, that's what's going to happen tonight. I don't care what you came in here with. I don't care what burdens you've come in, how weighed down you walked into this place tonight with. You've made your way to the house of God, and he's going to hide you in the secret of his tabernacle tonight, and your head's going to be lifted up above your enemies that are round about you, and this is what needs to happen in the night therefore I will offer in this tabernacle sacrifices of joy I will sing yea I will sing praises unto the Lord 
I wonder if you could do that for just a minute. Uh, something's going to happen when you begin to worship God. Lift up your heads. Uh, begin to worship Him. Come on, that's it. Offer a sacrifice of joy. Come on, don't do the normal. Make it a sacrifice. I'll offer a sacrifice of joy. Come on, praise Him. Come on, praise Him. Your head's going to be lifted up above all your problems. You're going to be lifted up above every problem that you're facing, every trial that you're facing. You can stand to your feet. I'm all through. We're about to just have a time of worship. And I believe whenever you leave this place, God's going to do a miracle in your life. You're going to see things clearly. In Mark chapter 8, Jesus came to a blind man. Mark chapter 8, and he came to Bethesda and he found that they brought a blind man to him. And they said, Jesus, can you touch him? And so he took the blind man by the hand, the Bible says, led him out of the town. And then he, the Bible says he spit on his eyes and he put his hands on him. And he asked him what he saw. The Bible says he looked up and he said, I see men as trees walking. The very next verse says, after that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And the Bible says, and he was restored and saw every man clearly. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what situation you've came into the house with. I've come to just remind you to look up. Look up. Look up. Your redemption draweth nigh. Look up. He's got your answer. He's got what you need. Don't turn to the right. Or turn to the left. Keep thy foot from evil. Psalms chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. David wrote this while he was running from his son. The Bible says this. Lord, how are the increased that trouble me? Many there be that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there's no help for him in God. But verse 3 says, but thou, O Lord, are a shield for me. He's my glory and the lifter up of mine head. Ladies and gentlemen, I wonder if you can make your way to this altar tonight and you would let the glory of God shine. Lift up your head. And let him lift your head up. Let him lift you up. Come on, there's going to be a miracle that takes place tonight. I believe the miraculous is going to happen in this place. Come on, that's, that's it. Lift up your voice. You are my shield. You're my hope. You're my joy. Come on, declare who he is in your life. Declare his greatness. For thou, O oh Lord, you are a shield for me. You are my light and my salvation. That's it, just worship it. Get your joy back. Get your peace back.
tell them in the process of harvesting after a message that there are five things that you need to do to get in the right position or posture to receive the Holy Ghost for the very first time. Many of you remember when you received the Holy Ghost for the very first time. There's that bridge that you have to go over from the natural to the supernatural, yielding your will and your spirit to God's presence and God's power. And so that's not always an, uh, an easy path to take. But when we tell them five things, one of them is that you've got to lift up your head. Because you know when your head is down in shame and repentance and there's a place for that when we're in a place of humility before the Lord, there is a place for that, there's a time for that, and there's a posture for that. But when it comes to receiving from the Lord, you gotta lift up your head. Oh, hallelujah you got to get in the right posture and position to receive uh, the mighty hand of God upon your life. Hallelujah! I believe the Lord wants to give us some joy and peace, and I believe God wants to give us some encouragement. Uh, but oh, we got to get in that posture, as Brother Richie preached tonight, and lift up our head. Come on, let's do that one more time before we leave tonight. Would you lift up your head? Lift up your hands. Receive ye the gift of the Holy Ghost. I receive strength. I receive joy. I receive power. Yes, yes, yes. I receive it in the name of Jesus. I was thinking about Brother Tyler Ritchie was preaching how that lame man in Acts 3 that he looked, Peter said, look on us. Amen. His head was down in shame, but he said, look on us. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. Oh, my friend, it pays to look up because Jesus could give you everything you need. Hallelujah. Praise God.